Hello to everyone as you're entering into the broadcast. I'm just going to give it a few minutes for every, oh well, a minute anyway, for everyone to have the opportunity to join us. Welcome as you're coming in. I'll just give it a moment for everyone to have a chance to come into the webinar. Okay, it looks like our numbers have steadied now, so we'll, um, we'll get started. Uh, just with a little bit of housekeeping first, as per usual, could you please ask any questions that you have via the Q&A facility? Um, this enables me to capture all the questions and have access to them later on if required. Um, so that's why we'll keep them in there. And it's just easier than managing them via the chat facility, which I do not have record of after the event. Um, today, we're lucky enough to have along Mark Ayres who is a director in the Outbound Capability Centre with ATO, and he looks after communication preferences, um, which has been a specialised project within the online services for agents. And he's worked in the Outbound Capability for a number of years and has a broad knowledge of the different types of correspondence that the ATO sends to clients across all different sorts of mediums. So welcome along today, Mark, and thanks so much for your time. Um, I'll now hand, oh, I just should say, sorry, if you've got questions as we're going throughout Mark's presentation, please feel free to type uh, them into the Q&A facility and I can put those to Mark as we progress. So thanks, Mark, over to you. No worries, thank you, Rachel, and thanks for the opportunity to speak. Um, as you can see on this slide here, so um, yeah, Mark is I work in the ATO, in the outbound capability. Um, so the outbound capability provide um, communication expertise um, in developing the best practice um, communications that are innovative, contemporary and tailored for delivered um, measured for the delivered measures outcomes for the ATO. So. Um, we provide um, a view on the most appropriate design, content and channel of the communications. Um, we work closely with the business lines who actually own the communications in to develop those communications. Um, we also work with um, our marketing and um, marketing teams um, for also for some input to try and uh, make sure that our um, communications are, are correct and meeting the mark. And we also use some external um, expert writers at times as well to, to help us develop our correspondence. So that's um, basically in where I come from and, and the background that I'm bringing to today's presentation. Um, if we can slip over to the second slide, please, Rochelle. Um, Specifically, um, today I'm going to talk about communication preferences. So, um, for maybe 18 months now, I think, um, the ATO have been um, running a project um, in regards to communication preferences. Um, it's a new service that's available in on online services for agents. So, I, I believe you'd probably all be using um, online services for agents now. Um, hopefully, you've been using it for a while and have a good understanding of how it works. Um, but generally, like preferencing was brought in um, and because of the impact back in 2015 um, that the ATO created when we um, signed up to MyGov and started sending our um, communications out to, to the MyGov inbox for clients um, who had signed up for MyGov. So um, I know that caused a lot of contention at the time and I think it's been an ongoing irritant um, for a, a number of agents um, that um, there was no control over that communications. Um, once, a, um, once clients um, had signed up to MyGov, um, the ATO um, set the preference to MyGov and um, there was really no control over that um, unless the clients um, actually rang the ATO to stop that um, communications going to MyGov um, and get it back to paper. 
So communication preferencing, um, as we say here, is, is a new service that's been brought into online services for agents um, and allows registered agents, um, and the big part here is with the client's express written authority um, to determine where digital communications are, get, are sent to. So whether they're sent to the agent or the client. So basically um, what we've done is brought in a second digital inbox. So if we think of MyGov as being uh, one digital inbox, we now have client mail um, which is a second digital inbox um, and we've um, given agents um, the ability to preference whether the correspondence goes to the client um, or to the agent themselves and if it goes to the client, the client has a MyGov inbox, it will go to that MyGov inbox generally for most CORAs. Um, if they don't then it will continue to go via paper and uh, through Australia Post um, or if it's sent to, if it's set to agent then it will go to the agent um, electronically, so in, into the client mail, not, not by paper anymore. Um, so for BAS agents um, specifically, um, it provides the um, ability to preference two types of um, correspondence that um, relates to your client's accounts and, and, and they are debt and activity statement related um, correspondence. There is actually um, six different types of um, communications. Um, the other ones are down there on the bottom, so income tax, um, study support loans, uh, superannuation and employer business obligations. So at the moment, um, correspondence going to that, to those different communication types, um, best agents aren't able to see or um, set a preference. Um, but for the two at the moment, and we're looking to expand that, um, especially under some of the, the business um, employer and business obligation correspondence. We're looking to, to add in some new templates under that and then potentially make that um, communication type visible to, to the BAS agents um, and allow um, BAS agents to be able to set those clients' preferences uh, for that type of communications. Um, the big thing here is if you've seen it in, in the system, if you've looked under communication preferences, um, within OSFA um, or if you're a, a client yourself of, um, and you've seen things on MyGov. Um, although we, we group them in the same area within the system, um, activity statement um, notifications and preferencing is not part of communication preferencing. We, we probably haven't been explicit in that and it, and it has caused some confusion, um, but they're, they're really two different things and um, um, they're, they're really separate there, so um, we just need to call that out as well. Um, if we could move across to the next slide, um, please, Rochelle. So how does um, um, communication preferences work? So um, what we're looking at here is if there's a tax agent linked to the client account, but no agent linked to the activity statement account, um, then um, the tax agent preferences will be used for that account. So um, within the tax office, I suppose, and um, we have a bit of a hierarchy of how we look at clients and, and their relationships. So we have um, what we call the client level, which is the highest level. We then have account levels and BAS agents generally can only link to a client at the account level. So you're linked um, to a specific account type, be it um, something to do with activity statements, um, or, or other account types, whereas a tax agent is able to link at that client um, level so they can see everything um, that, that, that the client has. So both um, say like income tax and activity statement accounts um, and so on. So there's a little bit, little bit of difference of um, what um, a different agent type can see. Um, so here we go. If there is a tax agent linked to the client account, however, a BAS agent linked to the activity statement account, then the BAS agent preference will be used for the communication. So that's where I'm saying um, we honour the, the, the links um, at the account type first. So if there's a link at the account type um, and that um, the person linked to the agent linked to that account type, um, we'll honour that um, the preferences they have set um, and we won't go to the client level um, and so on. Okay, um, if we can move across to the next slide, um, Michelle, that'd be great, please. I'll just provide a comment. Um, oh, sorry, no worries. Um, she just said that the income tax account would be great when a client and the bank needs details of where the client has lodged returns and no debt, etc. Um, yes, uh, there, there's there's lots of discussions that I, I know that we have in the organisation about um, the 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 level of access um, BAS agents should have um, to to different accounts. Um, at the moment, I 
generally a, a BAS agent isn't able to link to the um, to the income tax account. Um, that and if they were, it would always generally be over overridden by a tax agent anyway. So the one thing I suppose to um, to realise is there can only be one agent linked um, at the account level at any one time. Um, so there'd, there'd be some significant changes I'd, I'd suggest that we'd have to make um, to, to make that, that happen. So hopefully that's um, answered that question. Cool, okay. Um, I'll move on to the next part then if that's okay. Um, so here's just a bit of an example um, that hopefully um, makes it, um, gives you a bit of an idea of how things work if you haven't used communication preferences. Um, so this um, example here is where we're showing that there's a tax agent and a BAS agent um, linked to the client. So as I was saying before, at the client level here, um, we have a tax agent, um, Terry, who's linked linked at that level, um, but at the activity statement account, we have a, a BAS agent um, named Barry, who's linked to that account. Um, so um, if we send a notice of assessment, and this is probably the one that was back to the, the previous question a little bit. Um, in this case, because the BAS agent isn't, Barry isn't linked to the activity statement account, um, and the notice of assessment is actually in the income tax account and is under our income tax um, communication type, then when we, we, we look to send that notice of assessment, we'll look to see um, if anybody has set a preference on the income tax account. Um, and if not, then we'll look at the client and see if there's a preference um, set at the client level. And in this case, um, we know that um, Terry, the, the account uh, age, uh, the tax agent is set um, at the client level there. So we'll go and we'll send that uh, notice of assessment um, to Terry um, electronically um, to their client mail inbox. Um, if we can move on to the next um, slide, please, Rochelle. Um, in this case here, we've got, again, um, the same example with Terry linked at the um, account level, uh, sorry, at the client level and Barry linked at the account level. This time though, however, um, we're sending some correspondence that's um, for the activity statement account. Um, and in this case, Barry has set preferences um, for the correspondence um, for his client at that, that account level. So in this instance, um, we would first look and say at the account, at the activity statement account and see that there's a link um, to, to Barry, the BAS agent. Um, and then we would check what preferences have been set um, by Barry for the client for that account. And we'd honour those um, preferences there. And in this case, again, we're saying that um, the preference is to go to, to Barry. So this would go to electronically um, to the client mail inbox for Barry and that. Um, so again, as I said, it, it's really the, we work on, a, I suppose, a, a bit of a hierarchy um, uh, going back up the height, the, the chain, just to check who's, as I said, um, if the tax agent or BAS agent linked at a particular account level, um, and if there is, what are the preferences that have been set? If there's been no preferences set and um, nothing there, then we'll just, we'll just use whatever um, preferences we have in the system. So we have the communication preferences, um, underneath that, if there's no communication preferences set, we'll then look to see if the client has a MyGov account. Um, and if they have a MyGov account and the, the, the letter is enabled to go to MyGov, um, we'll send it to MyGov. If they don't, then we roll over and go to paper and then go to um, whatever address is on, the, um, on, the, on, on that account. So generally it's a postal address um, that we would look at and um, nine times out of 10 or maybe Four times out of five, I'd say, where a client has a BAS or a tax agent, that address is actually going to be the BAS or tax agent's address and not the client. So um, that letter would generally go um, to the agent themselves anyway. So I might move across to the next slide, um, Rochelle. So as I said, I'm not sure how many people have um, been using um, online services and been looking at the um, communication um, tab within the service and, and seeing all the different things you can do. Um, but in this slide, um, just point out that um, there is a particular um, menu item there for communication. Um, under that menu item, you can see you've got um, things such as client mail, which is the, the client mail inbox, 
communication history, which is a, a, a list of all um, communication, or well not all, but a majority of communications that have been sent to the client. Um, practice mail, which is your standard practice mail inbox. Um, and then you've got the preferences um, functionality there, so preferences and bulk preferences. So you can um, set bulk preferences in bulk um, up to 25 clients, um, or you can set them um, as a one-to-one -one, um, preference for each of the clients. Um, as we say, like it's under the profile communication preferences there. You can also see um, what preferences have been set for your clients um, using the advanced search um, functionality and then also um, using the communication type um, there to, to run a search um, on what preferences have been set there for your clients. Um, so it's um, probably something you can you can go just look at any any time uh, you know um, and you don't have to set a preference to have a look at it and see what it looks like um, and as I said um, the client mail won't uh, is there for you as well but you won't receive anything in the client mail um, unless you've got preferences set up um, where if something is sent to the client mail um, inbox, it will also appear on the communication history. So the client mail inbox is really just a, a different view of the communication history. So um, everything will um, generally appear in the communication history. A subgroup of that is the ones that appear in the client mail where it's um, been sent specifically to the agent. Um, if we can move across to the next slide, um, please, Rochelle, thank you. Um, so the next slide I just wanted to talk about, um, and it's probably the most contentious point we have um, with communication preferences, um, is the around about getting um, a written authority um, to um, change the client's address. So um, as we put here, the first um, step in the process um, when you're discussing communication preferences with your clients, um, it's just to talk about um, what communication um, types you would, so they decide what communication types you would like um, to know about. So what communications from the ATO would you like to go to yourself? And this is generally um, based on if you're already getting um, correspondence sent to your, to your practice, so your address is recorded on the, the client account, um, then generally I'd, I'd expect, you know, if you want to take up um, communication preferences and receive that um, electronically in rather than via paper, uh, that would be the type of communications you'd be looking to, um, to receive through, um, through online services. If, if you've got communications that would normally go to your client, then um, that you probably don't want them to come to you. And, and in some instances, we know if, if, if you've got none of your client communication coming to you, then, then there's nothing you really want to do with preferencing. It, there's no value from it. It's more for where you have communications coming to yourself, to your clients, and you'd rather get those electronically um, rather than paper, or you'd rather get stuff that has gone to MyGov sent to you. Um, the one thing I should probably note there is, um, the MyGov one is always going to come to you electronically. There's not an option to actually push that back to paper and then come to yourself. It's, if it's going to MyGov and you set the preference, it's always going to come to you um, electronically. Can the I second, sorry. From Simone there. Um, she would like to know how you select a notification as read because she's got a couple that she can't seem to get rid of notifications. Um. It should just by opening it should it should get rid of that notification. There's not an actual function um, to to be able to do that. Um, so yeah, um, but yeah, there's not not actually anything to get rid of the notifications by opening them up. They should generally um, uh, yeah be shown as read within the system and you'd lose um, I'm gathering you're talking on the, the little box um, maybe on your front screen where it's got the, the little bubble that says the number of no notifications there um, the only thing I could suggest you've read them multiple times and they don't disappear is that something she should be contacting the ATO directly on yeah I'd, I'd suggest try maybe refreshing the browser but if it sounds like if it's still happening after you've closed down and opened up the next day then I think so yes I, if you could maybe drop us a line um, we, we could get that looked into it's it's not something I've really heard heard of happening before um, 
but I'm not saying that it doesn't happen. It, it probably does. Maybe other people just um, haven't told us. But um, yeah, no. If you could drop us a line, I think that that would be fantastic. Um, fantastic. Then we can certainly try and get somebody to have a look at that um, and, and see what's going on. Because I know behind the scenes, um, our EST colleagues like it sets a, basically sets an indicator um, against that bit of corridors to say that it's been read. So it it could be something like that. So it's definitely worth. Um, contacting us and we, we can have a get somebody to look at it for us. Okay, thanks for that, Mark. Simone, might I suggest that you send um, a screenshot of the issue to me and I can forward that on to Mark for his team to look at. Does that sound good, Mark? Yeah, that'd be fine. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Um, I noticed, I think, was there any other questions or happy to move on? Um, Happy to move on there, Mark. Oh, hang yep. on, sorry, sorry. sorry. Um, if the tax agent prepares the BAS and the BAS agent only does the bookkeeping, will the BAS agent's access to the client's communication end when the tax agent lodges the BAS? No, the, the lodgement of the BAS wouldn't end. It's, it's the creating the client links um, that, that would end somebody. So, when you link to the client on a particular account level, uh, to a particular account, um, that that's what sets the link um, and gives you the option to set the preferencing. Um, the agent just lodging a BAS wouldn't, wouldn't break that link. The agent would actually have to go in and link themselves to that particular account. I've just had another participant say the same thing as Simone, um, Mark. So just on that, I'll gather that evidence and forward it through to you. Oh, no worries. Okay, thank you very much. And I'll, um, I might get the guys to, to have a look at it as well, just to see if it, I, ha I haven't heard anything. I'll, I'll actually follow up and see if they've also had the um, other um, agents report that, that type of issue. Cool, okay. Um, so just getting back to the slide. Um, so the next part again is to, to agree with the client um, that they're happy for the, the communications to be sent to the agent. Um, and, and generally we, we understand that that's probably already in place um, in, in lots of circumstances. Um, but for communication preferences, um, we do need um, agents to um, obtain that um, written authority and, and written authority doesn't have to be a bit of paper or, uh, you know, um, so on. It can be through email um, uh, um, communications as well, um, or, you know, if you're talking to the client and they're, they're signing other documents um, that can be included in, in things like letters of engagement and that. So, um, but it is a, it is a specific change um, to the client's um, address um, from changing it from being sent by paper to electronically. So it is something that that needs to needs to, to happen with each of the clients that you want to set a preference for. Um, and then step three there is um, to set the preference for the client. So um, like we identify there, um, you can add a client using your default preferences. Um, you can set specific client profile preferences for a specific client, so their own profile basically, um, or you can do bulk preferences up to 25 at a time and set them all the same way. So um, generally we, what we're finding is um, most agents um, set their default preferences and, and apply those to, to the vast majority of their clients, but there are some agents that may have um, clients with particular circumstances where they, they don't want them to use their standard um, uh, practice preferences um, and want to set them some personal preferences. Um, so yeah, so if we can move across to the next slide, please, Rochelle. Um, and here is just a little bit more around the, the written authority. Um, as I said, we're, we're trying to um, hopefully explain the reasoning behind behind this. Um, as I said, it has been a bit contentious, but it, it is definitely something that that needs to needs to happen. Um, I think you know some agents who uh, probably before COVID had a lot more contact with their clients face to face. It wasn't so much. Um, some of the agents that had a larger client base um, were finding it a slight imposition um, to do it. But as we said, why do we need the written authority? So again, here. Um, 
and I might just read it out a bit verbatim, I'm afraid, just to, to, to cover it off. Um, express written authority is the protection for, for yourselves and your clients by having a formal agreement around um, what communications each receive and, and particularly for things like maybe debt communications where yep, we're chasing some uh, payment or something, um, we definitely want, you know, that that's gone to the right person and both the agent and the um, client have agreed that who that should go to and, and, and so on. Um, so what we've got here in approved form is, um, is needed to change and um, address and express written authority provides this. So the basically um, the approved form we're saying here is there's a tick box. Um, once you set a client's preferences, you have to tick a little box to say that you've got that authority. Um, and that's basically the approved form that the commissioner accepts that, that you've, had, you've got that authority. Um, as I explain a little bit more, the secure agent digital inbox of the client mail inbox is considered an address for service. So any changes to the client's address requires um, you to get authorization. And that, that means even if you, um, let, if we took the debt example, um, if originally that was agreed that that was going to um, the agent, um, at a later stage if that changed and it was changed to go to the client, you just have to update that um, written authority to, to note that that change had been made. Um, as we say, this ensures both parties are clear on what communications they're responsible for and that um, you have met your legal requirements um, necessary for lodging the approved form. So like I said, um, the, the communication preferences setting that um, is um, taken to be, um, you're, using a, uh, you're submitting an approved form to the tax office. Um, and so we just need to make sure those requirements are followed. Um, the how, so as I was saying before, um, we, we um, believe it's fairly easy to um, obtain your um, client's written authority. Um, so um, many agents, as we said, are waiting to the next engagement. So whenever they're talking to the client, client comes in to lodge their activity statement, um, they'll get that written authority if they want to set preferences and change where or change the preferences. Um, as we say, um, options for um, obtaining the client's authorization include um, through the engagement letter, um, discussing and recording it um, in writing the next time you have an appointment, or emailing your clients um, and getting them to respond back. So, um, and when we email, um, talk around it, such things as an email, all we're looking for there is that the client um, provides a, a positive response. So um, we've asked that agents don't just send a, an email out and say, if you don't respond within you know, seven days, I will set the preferences to why. It's actually making sure you get that positive response to say, yes, I'm happy for you to set, um, my communication preferences to to yourselves um, if that's if that's the way you were looking to do it. Um, and here's just a little bit. Um, who do we need to obtain the permission from? So um, it must be um, a, received from the primary contact. So that could be like a, the individ, an individual themselves, a trustee, um, or a director. Um, and and one of the other questions we've been asked a number of times is um, if you represent a client in more than one capacity, such as an individual and trustee for their family trust, authority needs to be um, clearly stated the preferences for both roles. So in, in that instance, you, you've probably got to get them to um, give that authority twice to cover off both the, um, the trust and the, the individual um, aspects of, of the relationship. Um, Mark, sorry if I've missed it, but have the ATO issued an approved form for this authority? Um, we have um, on the communication. Oh, I've, I've double check on the communication preferences um, pages on our uh, on ATO.gov. Um, definitely, we had it there during beta. It should still be there now. There was an example um, of what an email may look like um, to a client, um, Rochelle. So. Um, I can I can get a copy of that example and, and um, forward it to you if you like, and we can put it with the with the notes that you're putting together, um, and, and that if you like. So um, that would be yeah. wonderful. Thank you, Mark. And yep. I have another question. Um, someone who's come in a little bit late, and she's a BAS agent, um, and the tax agents added themselves, and that delinked the BAS access. So um, she was removed from portal access, but this has meant she was removed from being able to do STP lodgements. She's had to add herself back on to complete the STP. Um, and in order to do that, had to remove the tax agent. So the question is, can the tax agent add themselves without removing the BAS agent? 
No, uh, and it's not really my area of expertise, but um, but I know um, it's been raised um, in other forums that I've I've attended with um, Colin Walker before he retired, and um, heard I had a lot more knowledge on it than I ever will. Um, but um, generally, no, there is no way to stop the tax agent coming in and overriding um, that that what we we return that client link. Um, I know it's a it is a it is a big irritant um, from the discussion with Colin um, that previously been had that that there was no way to stop that happening, um, but I'm I, I'm really not sure um, where where the ATA's landed um, with that with 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 how that works there that um, one agent can come and override another agent um, the the client link and and so on there I'm afraid. That's fine, Mark. Thank you for that. I'll just um, take that up with uh, Trent at some point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, like I said, I, I do know it's a, it is a it is a it is a big irritant um, that, that I think every time we we uh, um, do this presentation uh, or to different groups, um, it, it does get raised. And even with tax agents against tax agent, you know, one tax agent and another tax agent coming in and linking to that client and, and knocking them off from that account. Okay, I might move across to the next page if that's okay. Um, so I gather this is probably the picture I was thinking in my mind where we're seeing 216 with client mail is the, the issue we were talking about before. So yeah, if we, if we can get that information sent through, we can, we can look at that. So it should definitely, the number should drop each time you um, click on the link and read one of the documents. Um, so this is just a view of the, um, the client mail inbox um, and how you can customize um, the home page. So um, again, um, I believe for the home page you can have three widgets. I think as they call them there on the home page. Uh, I know it has been raised um, in other forums um, about having additional widgets, but um, my understanding is that again that's something with Trent and the um, the, the guys that look after the the online services um, like David Baker and that um, are looking at. But at the moment there there is only the, the three widgets you can have there. So um, it probably restricts some agents if they prefer other widgets, but um, you can have the client mail one there to see how many um, unread messages you have. Um, and I'm guessing a lot of you would already know how to customise the front page and that, but that that's where you can customise the front page um, and add client mail to, to, to that front page there if you like. Um, I might move across to the next page if we could. Thanks. So um, the client mail inbox. What I said, if you if you're not used client mail but you've used communication history, the view is is um is fairly similar there. So um, this is just within the client mailbox. It's showing you communications that have issued um, to the BAS agent. Um, generally, we would just show the client um, name and the subject for that particular. Um, piece of correspondence. So um, each of our uh, letters have uh, a different name um, that, that we hope um, when we originally set the names, um, uh, we worked with a number of agents to try and come up with some names that were meaningful um, and hopefully um, meant, meant something when somebody um, looked at our communication history or now it's moved across to the client mail inbox and, and could understand just from looking at it what um, uh, that that bit of correspondence was was about. Um, so the client mail will give you a view of your correspondence um, that's been sent to you specifically. Um, it's generally the last 35 days worth of correspondence, um, but you can always go back and look in the communication history um, to go back and look further at the correspondence you can send there. And again, you would see that, uh, again, that, that little um, bubble or, or the number there to say how many unread messages you have um, there, so um, but generally, if it's working, um, you should see that decrease as you read the, the correspondence. If we move across to the next um, slide, um, so here we're just talking about, and I, I'm guessing you've either through online services. So um, prior to online services, um, we did call this the client communication list. Um, so the CCL is, I think. We've, we've in, within the tax office, we refer to it as the CCL. Um, back since um, we shifted to MyGov in um, early May, uh, in, in March 
2015 and and provided that that client communication list um, to agents so they could see the, the correspondence that um, went across to my gov and, and have access to that correspondence um, so it's now changed to communication history but it's pretty similar um, to to what um, you, you would have probably already seen there before um, as you can see there, the difference is the is the channel. So um, we show you what channel that our correspondence went by. So um, as I said, not all the correspondence is available in the communication history yet. Um, a, 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 um, a large num a, a, by volume, a large number is available. Um, by the number of letters that the ATO sent, it, it's not. It's it's still um, it's probably a small number. Um, Again, you've got the different channels there. So we show you whether it went via paper. Agent digital is the channel we've, uh, the name we've given to the channel where we send it to the tax agent to the client mail inbox. Um, you'll also see um, other channel types potentially there as such as um, emails, SMS, um, uh, ATO online is another channel um, which we don't use very often, but we use it for the statement of tax record. Um, where clients um, can can get that that specific letter just online. So there's there's a number of different channels that you can you can view and sort and um, and filter by there. But um, hopefully that's probably um, pretty familiar with most uh, most agents. Um, if we move across to the next slide, I think Rochelle, that'd be good. Um, so the best agent view of client um, specific communication history. So. Um, it includes communications that are sent to yourself, um, to the client or the client's tax agent. So you can see a, a bit more here. Um, in the, this example, um, the PAYG um, instalment letters were issued to the client's tax agent, but they're visible to the BAS agent. So um, when we talk about back originally the communication types, and you can see the, the, the six different communication types, um, that we have set up and the, the different um, letters that are available under each communication type, you would generally see that um, pay as you go instalment communications are under the income tax um, uh, um, communication type. Um, and you can't set the preference for those, but you can still view them um, in the communication history because we know that that, that does have a um, significant impact um, on, on BAS agents, so they need to be able to see that correspondence. So even though um, this is an example where it all went via paper, so it could have gone, I'm not sure what it might have gone to the tax agent, could have gone to the BAS agent, could have gone to the to the client, depending on what address was on that particular account. Um, but in some instances, you may see that um, that channel for the PAYGI stuff is is set to agent digital. So the um, that would suggest then that it's gone to the tax agent, but you're still able to view um, that correspondence because we believe you need to be able to see that to undertake your role um, with your client. Okay, I might move across to um, our last, pretty well our last slide there, um, Rochelle. So um, I probably missed something out in, in, in the presentation, but um, online services is the first phase of um, communication preferences. So um, we we went basically uh, made um, communication preferences available to all users of online services um, a couple of months ago. Um, so everybody who uses online services um, has access to, to to the preferences and the communication history. But you have to use that through online services. Um, the next phase um, of communication preferences we're looking at is to make it available um, to the digital service providers. Um, through um, APIs, so application programming interfaces. Interfaces, sorry. Um, so this is um, will then give the ability um, for those um, digital service providers to incorporate the functionality in their practice management software. Um, so say so I'm not okay with the, the different types of software um, BAS agents may use, but things like Myob and um, Zero um, and and those those bigger companies. Um, we're looking to make the data available um, to them so that they can incorporate it into their practice management software um, so that then as a user of that software, you don't need to go out and back into online services um, for agents to, to do the set and manage the preferences and to retrieve the, the correspondence. Um, you'll have once the, the 
the digital service providers provide it, you'll have the ability to manage the um, communication preferences within that practice management software and, and we're expecting you know um, the digital service providers will then you know make enhancements on on how they might um, what they might do with with that correspondence when they receive it so you know we, we understand that they may download it directly for you um, may give you different types of notifications depending on um, what type of communication it is. So they may, we, we don't really at the moment place any urgency um, on any of our correspondence, but we know talking to some of the DSPs, they've talked about how they may, you know, flag it as if it was say a debt letter, they may flag it as uh, a higher priority and something you might need to look at um, or, or so on or other stuff they may flag as a lower priority. So we know that, that once they get the data that they'll be able to do a lot more with it and um, potentially hope um, automate some of it for some of it for the for the end users of their their software um, at the moment we're hoping to, hoping to pro to do that um, before next tax time so not the tax time coming up um, in July this year but uh, tax time 21 um, we're hoping to have that that um, data made available to the to the digital service providers, and hoping that they they take that up um, and incorporate it in their software um, for, for for tax time um, 21 and, and going forward. Um, so that's where uh, we want to head with preferencing, but we also. Um, because of preferencing, we want to make some changes um, as as well. So some of the um, feedback we've, we've we've had from users so far, and some of the things even internally, we've been thinking about as enhancements um, that we could make um, to the um, to the feature in that. Um, uh, just listed here. So some more um, around about so um, client um, client notifications and agent notifications. And so on. So um, at the moment, only an agent um, can set a, a communication preference. Um, your clients can't set that preference. They can view the preferences um, that have been set for them in MyGov, so they, they can go in and, and see their own. They have they have the communication history in MyGov. Um, and as we move forward to um, uh, online services for business. Um, they'll have that um, view as well through online services for business. So the ATO is, is um, I'm not sure if anybody's ever used the business portal, but the business portal, um, they're looking to move away from the business portal and, um, and build a new platform that's very similar to both um, online services for agents and um, the online services for individuals and provide a lot of the functionality that individuals have through online um, services for individuals going through MyGov, um, they provide that to businesses. So again, businesses um, will, um, once that's delivered, have the ability to, to view their own communication history um, in the online services for business and, and see their preferences. Um, as I said, um, at the moment, um, only the agent can set the preference. Um, we're looking at what features we may give um, clients themselves. Um, we don't believe we'd ever give a client the ability to set a preference because, you know, they need to have that conversation with their agent um, about that. So we don't want the client to have the ability to set a preference for the correspondence to go to an agent and they haven't had that conversation with the agent. Um, but there may be the ability in the future that the client could change the preference back to themselves. Um, so we, um, when that would happen, we'd also then want to be able to um, notify an agent of that change so that they knew that it happened and they could contact the client and, and discuss the reason why they may have done that. Um, so a bit around yeah, notifying um, agents and clients when the preferences are changed to some of the features we'd like to like to bring in. Um, and, th and that's probably aligning with a lot of the stuff you see happen in, in other organisations or other online accounts you have where a, a change made to an address or something you know, from Google or Facebook or whoever, um, you know, they, they send you an email just letting you know and, and that was this you type of message um, and so on. Other things we want to look at um, is we know one of the big things, bits of confusion we cause um, is the address that's that's on the correspondence, especially when we send something digitally. So um, we know that, you know, when we send something to my, uh, a letter to MyGov, for instance, um, we will generally pick the address um, up off the account. Um, if the client has an agent, um, 
then uh, generally, you know, what we see is the agent's address is, is recorded on that account. We'll put that on the letter and we know that can then causes confusions for clients because they think, um, although we send it to my government, send it to them, they think a copy of that letter has gone to their agent, whereas it, whereas it hasn't. And um, we know that unless the agent was looking at the communication history, they may not have seen that letter. So, or they're getting calls from their clients um, about that letter. So we're looking to change the address um, that we use um, on correspondence when we send it um, electronically. Um, our thoughts at the moment are probably around using the residential address or um, for an individual and a business address for a non-individual um, and so on. So, um, and also including who the correspondence was sent to. So if it's sent electronically to uh, the tax or to the BAS agent um, through client mail, then we would say that's that's where it was sent electronically. So looking in the communication history, um, they would yeah, or opening up the letter, um, they would have a, a, a good indication of actually who should have received that that piece of correspondence. Um, also looking at um, potentially being able to provide um, client preferences reports so that you can um, run a report um, and see what clients have been preferenced and what those preferences are. Um, a couple of the other uh, things we've looked at um, and, and you know some agents uh, uh, want them, some agents don't, um, but there's things we're still looking at is the ability to um, redact um, things like TFNs and other sensitive information from the correspondence. So at the moment you download a, a PDF and if you need to, uh, if you want to email it to the client and it's got a TFN then you know, the, the right thing to do is redact that TFN or not send it via email. Um, we're looking at uh, ways that potentially we could um, offer a, a version of the, the correspondence. So um, that would have some of that sensitive information redacted so that it could potentially be sent um, via email. Um, and the, another thing we're looking at, um, again, is um, potentially CCing. So um, actually sending both, the if we took the, a, correspondence say going to a client in MyGov. Um, at the moment, the only way the agent would see that then is to go to the communication history. We're looking at potentially the ability to actually say, well, actually, no, let's, the preference is that it goes to both the client and the agent. So um, let's send a notification to MyGov and also the notification, put the, you know, the bit of correspondence in the client mail. So it's there in front of you when you open up client mail. Um, so they're just a few of the features um, we're looking to um, make um, some further enhancements to um, as we move further into the and uh, along the line with the project. Um, I think that's it, Rochelle. Um, the next page over has just got um, some of some information. So again, there's an email address for the the team of us that look after. Um, uh, digital um, after communication preferences, so digital comms and preferencing at ato.gov.au. So um, happy um, for those screenshots that are you know the issue where we were talking about um, the, the the notification bubble having the numbers in it after the correspondence has been read. Um, you can always drop us a line on um, that email address, and 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 one of the, the team will pick that up and have a look at it for you. Um, and also, I'm not sure if you attend local forums, but um, I know at local forums, uh, sorry, open forums, when they were happening, I'm not sure when they're, they're back online now with um, COVID-19 um, and things, but um, again, we're, um, communication preferences in, is included as part of that open um, forum um, content, um, and they're there, so they're happy to um, answer some of those questions. So that's um, generally the, the presentation um, there, Rochelle. I'm happy if there's any additional questions that have arisen um, as we've been speaking, if anybody has anything they want to ask. Thanks, Mark. I've got one from Anne, and she's wondering, are we still able to download client integrated account report? Um, sometimes bank contact BAS agents, and we can give them certain information, um, but often they're having to refer that on to the accountant. Um, again, I think you've, you've got me on a question that I'm not really an expert in on, on, on those. Um, I, I honestly don't know the, the answer to that um, That's one for fine. you, I'm I, afraid, yeah. yeah. I think we might need a separate presentation on, on um, OSFA more generally. Yes, yeah, there's a, yeah, uh, if, if I thought 
think about it, you know, I, I know we talk, there's like, they talk about there's 70 odd different, 76 or something functions you can do within OSFA. Um, communication preferences is just one of those, those functions. And I'm sure they're, they're you know, there, there's new functions now, even that probably didn't exist um, before COVID-19 with some of the, the, the stuff for JobKeeper and, and things like that, that, that are now available as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so anyone else got questions for Mark? Doesn't seem as so I've got a separate question coming through. Um, so anonymous, I'll, I'll deal with your question um, after the event. It was, it's not related to this presentation. So um, give it just a couple more seconds to see if there are any other questions flowing through. No, it looks like it's all. So to, in answer to some people's queries, we will be sharing um, a recording of this event, uh, not the slide decks, just a recording. So no further questions. Any other comments from you before we end the event there, Mark? I'm um, not just again, thanks for the opportunity um, to be able to present to, to the BAS agents online. Uh, um, look, we think, it's not the panacea for all the troubles um, around communications and, and doesn't meet all the requirements and we know there's still work to do, but um, we think it's a, a good uh, first step in the right direction um, of being able to make communications um, available electronically and hopefully um, cut down on some of the paper um, that comes into the to the offices um, makes potentially make it easier for agents to store copies um, and download copies of, of that correspondence um, and I think you know as I said once um, it's made available in um, practice management software if the DSPs um, see the value and take it up hopefully that um, provides um, more ability to potentially automate some of the functions and and make um, life a bit easier for everybody so um, yeah look um, thanks for the opportunity again you've got our um, email address there if you have any questions in regards to um, communication preferences and the functionality and if things are not going um, as you think or any suggestions you may have um, in regards to further enhancements that you think you know um, would make your, your life and, and other agents uh, life easier um, then happy to also um, receive those because you know um, it is something you know we want to try and get um, right and, 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 and make it work as best as we can for, for yourselves and your clients. Well as I said at the beginning, we appreciate your time, but moreover, we appreciate you and your team's efforts in making our lives so much easier um, around these communication pieces and more generally with online services to agents. And also all of you comms um, during this time that I know I'm speaking on behalf of all members when I say, you know, the, the work that you guys have achieved has been somewhat phenomenal um, and we're very appreciative. No worries, thank you. I'll pass that back. Excellent. All righty. Well, um, we'll end the meeting now and um, everyone have a wonderful afternoon. No, thanks, Rochelle.